Hello, everyone. This is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation well. Consumer. In our coverage of the Aircraft Electronics Association show in Reno, we reported on Garmin's new GTN series navigators. And before the show kicked off, we flew with Garmin flight test engineer Grant Wittenborn for a checkout on the new system. Let's start uh, with the home page and, and show how the touch face basically works. Okay. Okay. Pressing the home button takes us back to the home page, which is, should be very familiar. And it's always a familiar spot to get you back to a starting page on the desktop. We've got our top-level map, traffic, terrain, and weather functions, as well as any flight planning, procedural, and uh, chart information on the second row. And then a lot of the background data uh, falls in the bottom level. Now, one of the things you've done in this series is to, is to design the bezel so you can uh, position your hand and embrace it for turbulence. Can you show how that works? That's right. We've got uh, a little bit of integrated features on the on the bezel here to allow your uh, place for your fingers just to, to uh, stabilize while in turbulence. Down here on the bottom as well gives you quick access to any of the sub-level pages. And then again, the home button always gets you back to the desktop. Now, one of the things I noticed when we were doing the demo is that the menu system and the logic is uh, very intuitive, uh, particularly with regard to frequency management and the audio panel. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so we've got our active comp, standby, our comp frequency in the top and the standby in the, in the bottom. You simply touch the standby, change the frequency, either transfer it into the active or simply press enter, and it puts that frequency into the standby. Touch the comp frequency to, to uh, initiate the transfer. The audio panel itself has its dedicated page, which allows you to switch comps, monitor the cross-side comp, split mode, access uh, audio playback controls, control the, the cabin speaker, the speaker volume, and then the uh, outer marker, the marker beacon uh, interface as well. Now, it's not obvious from what we're looking at here, but that audio panel is totally remote. That is a remote audio panel and uh, that could live behind the uh, 750 itself. You could put it behind the 750 or if you don't have space for that, virtually anywhere in the airplane. Another feature of our audio panel is what we call the split mode. In split mode, the co-pilot can transmit on the cross-side comp while the pilot transmits on his own comp. Crew intercom is a, another uh, dedicated function, so while you're in split mode, you can tr tr turn the crew intercom on and off independently. Taking us out of split mode gets back to the dedicated uh, comm selection. Any of us have, who have used the 430-530, we're used to scrolling the waypoints on a flight plan using the uh, concentric knobs. Uh, this allows you to do a limited amount of that, but it also has keyboards and it has a graphical user interface that allows rubber banding. So uh, let's take a look at that next. One of the neat features that we have is graphical flight planning, which shows you our, our current flight plan in Magenta, and that's the active leg. But what we can do is modify that by entering our graphically graphical edit flight plan mode. So now we simply drag this leg and modify it. So we can drag that leg to, say, the Chinook VOR select Chanute, and done. And so now we've modified our flight plan graphically without actually having to go into the dedicated flight plan page. But you'll notice that it's been updated accordingly based on that graphical modification. Now I should also point out here that unlike the 530 and the 430, uh, the 750 has a complete a route log. So, so now you can determine uh, total distance, cumulative distance, intermediate distance, including the fuel calculations on those legs. That's right. We can go back into the flight plan. It shows you cumulative distance uh, along our route of flight. Obviously, the distance of that leg, desired track, and these headings are obviously modified, uh, customizable. You can set them up to display whatever you like. And while we're on this page, why don't we take a look at the transponder control? Okay. Transponder control is, again, remote. So our top-level transponder button allows us to set the code, a dedicated VFR button to get us back to 1200, and it allows us to change the transponder mode that we're currently in. So we could go to standby, ground, on, or altitude reporting. That transponder, uh, the mode change happens automatically, as in our legacy transponder. Uh, 
installations. For a quick ident, we've got the ident button that's always at the top level. A quick push of that engages the ident mode. Learn more at Garmin.com and you can read a full report on the GTN series in the April 2011 issue of Aviation Consumer at AviationConsumer.com. I'm Paul Bertarelli. Thanks for watching.